In this video, I will teach an AI how to play the ship command role in Lethal Company. I will then test it by playing a full game with it to see what's the biggest quota we can get to. But you might be wondering, why make an AI when you can just play the game with other people like a normal person would? Guys, I have a stun grenade. This guy. Well, you see, I used to play the game in a duo with a friend of mine called Freaky. I was usually the one to go into the facility while he guided me from the ship. Things were going great. We reached high quotas, explored different moons, and got a lot of loot. Check out what I found. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. It truly seemed like nothing could ruin this friendship. What? Sadly, however, for reasons beyond my control, Freaky suddenly decided to go his own way, leaving me with no one to play the game with. And this is when I decided to start working on the AI, which from now on, I will be occasionally referring to as Roberto. Now, in order for Roberto to do the ship command role properly, he has to fulfill two main responsibilities, communicating map information to the player and countering outdoor enemies. Let's start with the map. Our goal here is to get the AI to detect the enemies and items so it can communicate that information to the player. There are three enemies around you. Three? You're about to die. Oh shit. The way that the AI will analyze the map is by taking a screenshot of it every few seconds. It will then apply three masks to that screenshot. The first mask will highlight any bright yellow objects. This is to capture the loot items. The second mask will be to capture enemies, which are represented on the map as red circles. The mask will first highlight red objects from the screenshot. Then we will remove objects that are too small or not circular enough. This should leave us with just the enemies left. The third and last mask will highlight the blue cursor that shows where the player is looking. This will come in handy later when we need to communicate the directions of the object. At this point, I was eager to try out the AI. So as an initial version, I made the AI communicate the number of items and enemies every 5 seconds. This did not turn out to be a mistake. Two items, zero enemies. One item, zero enemies. Four items, zero enemies. Two items, one enemy. One item, zero enemy. I ended up playing a couple of days on Titan with this version of the AI and I averaged around 350 bucks per day in loot, which is a good start. Now, at this point in the video, you might be wondering why Roberto sounds more like a Roberta. What are you talking about? That's because Google's text to speech library in Python has no male voice. Stop talking about me. And I was too lazy to change the name. I said stop talking about me. So yeah, I guess Roberto has a very motherly voice for some reason. Now, having the AI tell me the number of items and enemies was working okay. However, with that being the only information given to me, it was often challenging to locate the positions of the items, or to guess where the enemies were approaching from. And so the logical next step was to make the AI communicate the directions of the objects and how far away they are. This proved to be the most challenging part of the video, as it was hard to strike a balance between making the AI communicate as much information as possible and making that information easily understandable by the player. This meant that I had to do a lot of trial and error, which is exactly what I did. I ended up with three very different systems to communicate the information to the player, number three being the one I ended up using in the final gameplay. The first system was fittingly named More Numbers, and the idea behind it was to build on the communication system we already have. Let's take this screenshot as an example. In the current system, the AI communicates the number of enemies and then the number of items and then that's it. We will build on this by adding two numbers for each enemy and item. The first number is the direction, which will be represented as a clock angle relative to where the player is looking. So 12 is in front, 3 is to the right, 6 is to the back, and so on. The reason I used clock angles here is because it's more intuitive and easier to understand than normal degrees. The second number is the distance, which will be represented as a number between 0 and 100. 0 being right on top of the player, and 100 being at the furthest corner of the map. The AI then takes this message and communicates it to the player verbally over the walkie. Items 4, 1, 5, 7, 8, 1, 16, 10, 42. Items 3, 2, 3, 8, 7, 11, 41. Items 3, 8, 14, 10, 25, 11, 30. Enemies 2, 10, 52, 10, 58. Items 1, 1, 4. My biggest issue with the system was that while trying it in-game, it was difficult to understand all of the numbers being communicated. And most of the time, I found myself only processing the first one or two items and then ignoring everything after that. To me, this was not efficient. And so I started working on a new system where the AI communications were less overwhelming, which ended up being the second system on our list here, named Hot and Cold.
the AI will measure the distance between the player and the nearest loot item. And based on that, there are three possible outcomes. If the distance in the current screenshot is lower than the distance in the last screenshot, meaning the player is getting closer to the loot item, the AI will communicate hot. Otherwise, if the player is moving away from the loot item, the AI communicates cold. Finally, if there are no loot items in the vicinity, the AI will say no loot. Here is some footage of me trying out this AI. Probably behind the wall. I have to jump. Make this Hot. come on. Oh, shit. Hot. Cold. Can you not? I can't believe this worked. <laughs> I found this AI to be the most fun to play with, mainly because of how easy it is to follow its communications. With that said, however, the obvious drawback here is how limited the information we get is. The AI doesn't provide any information regarding the enemies or the loot items other than the closest one. And so I moved on to my third and last attempt, named the grid map. I got the idea for this system when I came across a video on Reddit, where the player was using a minimap mod to help him find nutcrackers and kill them. This made me think of how nice it would be if Roberto could provide the information to me in a way that is similar to how a minimap works. This in addition with the fact that I found out recently that the in-game text chat can be transmitted using the walkie-talkie gave me an idea. A grid map. The plan is as follows. The AI will first take a screenshot of the map. Then it will rotate it so that the player is looking straight north. This is to reposition everything on the map to be relative to where the player is looking. After that, the map will be split into a 5x5 grid as shown on the screen. The AI will then process each item and enemy as usual. But instead of getting their directions and distances as numbers, it will just check which map grid they're in. The AI will then produce a text message consisting of 5 lines that have 5 characters each. Each character representing a grid on the map. O means the grid is empty. I means the grid contains items. 
X means the grid contains enemies, and Z means the grid has both items and enemies. Finally, we'll add a line at the start that has the exact total number of items and enemies on the screen. The AI will then send this in the text chat, split into two messages as the game only allows four lines per message. This of course means that Roberto will unfortunately lose his voice. Wait, please, let me tell you something. But at least now I don't have to worry about him being too loud. Enemies 1, 11, 36, items 1, 9, 4, 1 items, 1 enemies. So now it's time to move on to the next and much easier phase countering outdoor enemies. You see, one of the main things that slows you down in the game is trying to finish gathering and returning loot to the ship before 4 pm. Any journey you make after that is severely hindered as you try to crouch around dogs and hide from giants. This means that if our very own Roberto is able to eliminate or at least reduce the outdoor dangers, he will have effectively increased the amount of loot we can gather per day. Our main concern here is with two enemies, the giants and the dogs. For the giants, we'll counter them using the radar booster flash command. This command makes the booster emit a sudden light that acts just like a flashbang, stunning the monsters around it, including the giant. You seeing this shit? Even if the giant catches you, if the booster is nearby, your teammate can flash it, stunning the giant and causing it to drop you. The flashing also stuns dogs, which is a good bonus, but we also have an additional counter for them. The dropship. You see, whenever the dropship lands, it plays music that attracts dogs from across the map, leaving the rest of the area clear. So whenever needed, I can trigger Roberto to order an item from the terminal shop, which will cause the noisy dropship to land. So with this, Roberto is basically ready. What's left now is to add a way for me to have some control over him. So I can make him order a dropship when I want, or switch between giving me map updates and flashing the rudder booster. To do this, I'll use a simple chat command system. Whenever I need to, I will send one of the following commands on the text chat, which Roberto will be regularly scanning. Once a known command is identified, he will do the assigned action. For example, here is me ordering him to leave the terminal, charge his walkie, and then step back from the terminal so I can use it. So now that Roberto is ready, it's time to do the full run with him as promised at the start of the video. To watch it, click on the video right here or use the first link in the description below. See you there.